That's how you get bitches immediately. <laughs> What's going on? Y'all do, doing good? Yeah, good. It's good to be here, man. Um, that's that's not how I get women. That's not how you do. It. You need at least four wheels, not two. Um, I'm not really in a mood to hit on women anymore, just because I feel like I can't ask questions, like especially older women. Like, wh why am I never allowed to ask your age ever? Like, why is that the worst thing I can ask? How how old are you? How, how dare you? <laughs> like it matters. Like when do women realize like we don't care how old you are? Like guys, we'll fuck a mummy if it has a nice ass. Like, <laughs> and still brag about the next day, like ah, she was a moaner. Ah. Like it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like, I met this chick outside the pyramids, right? <laughs> She gave me her hieroglyphics. Like, it's not. Like, some of you remember social studies. That's good. Oh, man. I, uh, I'm from a really small town outside of Columbus, Ohio. And um, obviously, never been there. Um, like, ever since I was a little kid, like, it's a very small community. But ever since I was little, like, my four best friends have been black my entire life. So, like, all my life, you know, I've been surrounded by, like, the black culture, by people. Like, I'm very comfortable, very embraceive of it. Like, even now, like, I'm on all black TV shows, basically, like, an all black cast and me for credit purposes. But, like, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very comfortable, is what I'm trying to say. But even growing up with black friends, like, there's still obviously, you know, certain things you can't do or say unless, like, a dope Kanye song comes on. They're like, all right, this one time. And, um, like, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I say it in my car. I do, I'm sorry. Um, and, uh, for any white people in here who like, you know, want to get as close as possible to uh, saying those things, I suggest you go to London. I was just in London for a week. We were doing a tour. Um, it was with me and uh, five of my castmates. And we were doing a tour there and we are talking to some of the locals about the language barrier. Because in London, like, they speak English, but like, not really. <laughs> like, like, if I say personality, they would be like, uh, personality. You'd be like, mm, there's more letters in there. But, <laughs> Tomato, tomato, whatever, I get it, it's fine. And uh, I, was, I was talking to one person, I found out they have different, like, different terms for things, like different names for other things. I found out that uh, another word for like underwear there is uh, knickers, which was dope news for me because I just talked about my underwear the whole time and nobody could say shit. <laughs> like, I just immediately turned into Denzel. I walked around in just my boxes all day. People would be like, what are those? They'd be like, my knickers. <laughs> People would be like, those are dope. I'm like, thank you, they're my favorite pair. I die for my knickers. Uh, <laughs> I went skinny dipping, a girl's like, you're not gonna take those off? I was like, knickers, please. <laughs> I could not have a speech impediment and do that joke. This would be my last time on stage ever. <laughs> white people who just can't say certain things around black people, and black people just can't do certain things around white people. Like, reach for your driver's license. <laughs> the news, people who are uncomfortable. <laughs> now for the transition of a lifetime. Um, who believes in horoscopes? About four people that are completely stupid. All right, that's cool. Um, it's just not a real thing. I'm sorry. It's not real. It's, it's too vague. Like, I just don't believe in anything about them. Like, like all like the little attributes that go along with, you know, like, oh my god, Virgos usually have two arms, two eyes, and two legs. Get out of here. That's so me. Like, yeah, that's most people. Like, come on, man. I just feel like every girl I meet now is immediately like, oh my god, oh my god, what's your sign? What's your sign? Like, it doesn't matter at all. I feel like Jesus himself could come back and be like, sup, girl? I feel like he'd be cool like that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm Jesus Christ. And chicks today would be like, yeah, we know. Your birthday's December 25th, you're a Capricorn, my ex is a Capricorn, won't make that mistake again. I can walk on water, like, but yeah, he was a show off too. Like, oh man, it's so dumb. I feel like women are just gonna start like holding in their babies longer so they're not born in certain months. Like, nah, my baby will not be a Leo. <laughs> Your water just broke. <laughs> you know what else is broke? His daddy, who is also a Leo. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> it's 
so stupid. My, uh, my friends thought it'd be cool to take me to my first strip club a couple months ago, and they were wrong. Because I didn't get taken to like, you know, like the nicer, classier, like higher rent strip club like my first time. I got taken to like one of like the really nasty, skanky strip clubs. Like this club took change. That's how bad this place was. Like, like they were saying stuff I didn't even understand. Like chicks were coming up to me, how you doing, sugar? You want me to make that thing pop for you? <laughs> Don't do that. Don't. Do that. I saw the most gangster thing I've ever seen in my entire life in the back of this club. It's been my friends who were hanging out in the back of the club, just kind of like watching over the place. And across the club, I can see this dude getting a lap dance. You know, like the music's playing, she's facing towards him, grinding on him and everything. And this dude just has a handful of cash. Probably about $25. <laughs> all in once, all in once. And like the music's playing, and he just bah, throws it, and it rains down on her. And in my mind, if you've got 25 to throw on the first throw, Probably got a lot more to throw, right? So the song changes, and she turns around and faces the other way to keep dancing, and this dude bends down and scoops up his cash and threw it again. So in her mind, like, he just kept making it rain back then. No, this dude was doing the whole water cycle from eighth grade science class. There's condensation, precipitation, evaporation, condensation. Like, that's not right. Thank you so much. Be a bit too long. I left my little boy in the car. Y'all cut it off. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Forget them children. I, I cracked the windows. He can breathe. Lay down. <laughs> I'm going to tell you one thing about me, man. I'm like, hey, I don't know about y'all, but I don't trust everybody. The way things are happening nowadays in the world, you can't trust your kids with everybody. They're shooting up churches and schools and malls. I take my baby with me. And daycare too high, and then they, they got the nerve now to charge you a late fee at the daycare if you late picking your baby up. I'm like, this ain't no DVD or a rental car, this is a baby. <laughs> you gonna charge a late fee on a baby. The daycare my little boy go to, they got the nerve to charge you $5 a minute every minute you, $5 a minute every minute you late. Last Thursday, I was true, true story, I was 30 minutes late picking my little boy up. I walked to the double lady and said, uh, Mr. Toy, that'd be $150. I said, you could keep him. Lay down. 150, you bought that baby. Lay down. You start again in the morning. Lay down. 150. I gotta pay for summer school. Are you crazy? Am I the only one that's, that's so irritated the summer camp is so expensive, but you still gotta send the lunch with them kids? You like that? You like some account 128? You better, you better get him the eight, and y'all keep the 120. I'm not sending no lunch. I'm, I'm glad they back. I'm glad school is back. I'm I, when summertime is out, your light bill go up an extra sixty-eight dollars. Am I lying? They leave the lights on everything. PlayStation running all night. Then they run the water full blast when they brushing their teeth. Your tooth this big, cut that water off. The water, full up, cut that water off. Oh man, I'm telling you man, I love my kids. I got a little boy and a little girl, the best of both worlds. Let me tell you something, what I love about kids. Isn't it amazing how DNA works? How DNA will determine what characteristic your child is gonna have from each parent, right? Cause it make you know you had a daddy head, the mama forehead, the, the daddy nose, and the mama hair, and got the great grandmama eyes. My little daughter, pretty, beautiful thing on earth, inherited all her mama looks. The only thing she got from me was my voice, but she looked like a mama, but she sounded like me, and it's, and it's crazy. And I know y'all laughing. I live with her, and I know it's funny, cause I gotta hear her talk every day. And the other day, she woke up from a nap. True story, walked into the room. I said, hey, baby, how you doing? You want daddy to get you some juice? She looked at me right in the face. She said, I'm really getting about sick of that juice, man. <laughs> so I said, well, what you gonna drink then? She was like, give me a shot of that great goose on the refrigerator. 
that's what y'all be drinking. <laughs> then she gonna ask me a question that I really didn't even know the answer to. She, Cause you know kids ask you anything when they think they know everything. Cause they smart, but they be asking dumb questions. She gonna come in the room to my, my mama left me with you. Like I'm your daddy, who else supposed to watch you? <laughs> Did she leave you with me? Yes. <laughs> you think I signed up for this job? <laughs> and let me say this too. Well, we out here, I know the world crazy, but one thing about it though, we all gotta come together as one. And I'ma say this, I don't care what color you are, black, white, you can be orange, I don't care. If the police tell you to freeze and don't move, you freeze and don't move. I got pulled over on the way over here, I played dead in my front seat all the way. to my woman like it's a drive out step. He took my license registration. I said, it's already out now. You see it? I am not moving. <laughs> Sir, step out the car. You can open the door, I'll fall out, but I'm not getting out. I am not getting out this car. Hey guys, uh, I am Jamie Ward and I'm from Boston originally, so I'm so glad. Yeah, but let me tell you, I'm glad to be down here performing. Uh, because it is tough for me to be a Chinese comic in Boston. Um, it's tough for me to be a Chinese comic because I'm Korean. Uh, that's... Here's the thing, I get treated the exact same. Everywhere I go, I was walking out of a mall in Tennessee last week and one of the kiosk ladies goes, I just want to say, you speak English, good. <laughs> in my head, all I could think was, you don't. Um, Here's the thing, I'm not too big to take a compliment, right? So I, I did turn to her and I said, oh, thank you very much, thank you. Uh, I've been a practice very hard. It's, it's Rosetta Stone's child. Here's my thing, I just consider myself American. I, I consider myself American because I've lived here my whole life. And uh, oh, also, also because I was adopted. Uh, my parents were white. They look like half of y'all. Uh, <laughs> not so much the other half, but still more y'all than me, though. They look like everybody in here more than they look like me, which means I get weird questions from my friends. They say, hey, man, where are you from? And I'll tell them I'm from Boston, originally. And then they, they ask me again with air quotes. They go, no, I mean, like, where are you from? from? That's when I tell him Korea, and the weird thing is, nobody has ever asked me a follow-up question to that. <laughs> Glad you guys are tracking, that's right. There is one more very important thing we gotta ask. Which Korea are you from? <laughs> are you from the good Korea? Or are you from South Korea? <laughs> I'm so glad you guys got that too. Uh, it's, there are some places I go, I was in Alabama last week too, and uh, they just stared at me. They, there was a guy in the front row that said, I thought both of those were part of China. Uh, I didn't know, I didn't even know. Here's the thing, being adopted actually makes me more American than most people too. When my parents decided to have kids, they did the most American thing they could. They outsourced labor to Asia. Um, that's... I heard some groans. If you don't like that, buy domestic. That's, that's the point of that. That's... I'm not making those true. Here's the thing, though. I've, I've learned, uh, I've learned uh, different things. And my mama sat me down one time when I was a kid to tell me about my adoption. She goes, honey, we always knew we wanted to adopt a kid, but we couldn't afford to. And then one day, Korea lowered the price. <laughs> it's like, how's that supposed to make me feel? Right? I'm a coupon baby. Um, <laughs> I 
Here's the thing, though. As I got older, I learned to appreciate that. That's really cool. It means I went to a family that made a decision they wanted me in their life, and that makes me very lucky, right? Nobody's ever adopted a kid on accident. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Nobody knows two 16-year-olds got drunk in the back of a truck after prom, filled out 40 pages of paperwork, ordered a baby from China. Like, that's... <laughs> So it's an important thing to me, and, and people wonder if I would ever consider adoption if I have kids, and I always say, absolutely, if I ever have kids, uh, they're going to a good home, too. That's... <laughs> you all clap too hard for that joke. You... <laughs> so I don't know anything about being Asian at all, uh, except for what I learned from TV. That's, if that's not a weird way to learn about my culture, right? Like, who decided I was going to be known for having a small penis and being good at math? <laughs> no, that's, that's not even fair. By the way, ladies, that is just a joke, too, all right? That is not, I am, I actually have a very large problem with math. I am not good at that at all. So it's, I'm, I'm not actually very good at uh, talking to women. I can talk to you all from the stage, but uh, I'm not good. And it's weird because I grew up in a house with three and it didn't make me good at talking to women. But you know what it did make me good at, sir? I learned three things. Faking a smile, losing a fight, pretending I'm happy. I've got those three <laughs> things down. We never got to do what I wanted to do around the house, right? Like what, what movie are we gonna watch tonight? The Dark Knight or The Notebook, huh? Notebook. Three to one, I never got to see The Notebook, ever, not once. <laughs> So my, my cooler friends try to teach me. Uh, I went to a bar with one of my buddies the other night, and he goes, dude, it's just confidence. He walks up to this pretty girl with all the confidence and swagger in the world. He goes, girl, your hotness is at a 10. Need to bring it on down to a 6, all right? Your 10, bring it on down. Like, he, he said that to another adult out in public, and it worked. <laughs> he may have been on this show two comics ago, too. Uh, <laughs> true story. And... <laughs> Here's the thing, I can't do that. I, I freak out, I'm like, I know all those words, but I, I, uh, I lose my confidence when a girl comes and talks to me. I get nervous, and the next girl that came up, I said, uh, hey, girl, you think you're a 10, but you're a six. <laughs> it's not the same thing. I found out why, though. This is why I can't do it. Um, it's because you all uh, talk in metaphors sometimes. I'm supposed to read between the lines. Guys are supposed to like infer things, and I am very literal. Um, this is totally true. One time I was on a date with this girl. She's sitting on the sofa and goes, Hey, Jamie, what would you do if you were the boss of me? I said, Well, I'd probably reduce your work hours so I don't have to pay your health benefits. <laughs> Sweet girl, she gave me a second chance at this conversation, too. She, she actually said, No, so I mean, like, what would you do if you're the boss of me? Bedroom, huh? said, well, in that case, I would report you to HR. Uh, that's not appropriate conversation, I'm your boss. <laughs> I'm not gonna get fired because you're a whore, right? Like that's... <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. I've been Jamie Ward. <laughs> yes, sir, uh, yes. Uh. A lot of y'all laughing, and I ain't even said a word yet. <laughs> I've been having some strange things that have been happening to me lately, though. People have been walking up to me and just start singing the theme song from Good Times. <laughs> I have no idea why, either. Because I know Jimmy Walker ain't never been this fine. I don't know, no, I don't care what nobody say. I laughed too hard, that wasn't a joke. Even had one lady walk up to me, she gonna talk about, uh, I give you $50 if you say dino Mike. Man, you don't lost your mom, I'm not paying, you ain't gonna pay me no $50. That's insulting. Now you give me a hundred. I do the dance, the walk, and hit you with a, I know. Now I have been doing this comedy for a while. And I feel like we family, so I'm going to be honest with y'all. Uh, this comedy ain't working out the way I want it to. My girlfriend gave me two or three more weeks to get it together. She just start coming to the comedy shows with me too. 
comedy ain't for everybody. <laughs> ain't nobody laughing, Jordan. See, nobody told me when I got into comedy, you know, when you first start, you don't get no money. <laughs> what you get is a word that I'm tired of hearing called exposure. <laughs> Hell, I can't do nothing with that. <laughs> Fellas, do you know how hard it is to be in a relationship where you're not making no money? You can't win no arguments. <laughs> look at some of the women looking like, if you ain't making no money, what you arguing for? <laughs> Going out to eat. My girl, she make good money. She fly to tennis. She likes to go to Red Lobster. Now some things are just taking it too far. We sit down to eat and she grab both the menus. <laughs> I do the ordering. I'm like, well go ahead. Do y'all know when the food come? I look down at my plate. I got fish sticks and hush puppies. <laughs> over her place, she got lobster, shrimp, crab legs. She gonna look back at me, problem? <laughs> I was like, no, not really. I was just kind of know what them crab legs taste like. What they taste like? They taste like job. <laughs> That's what they taste like. And this lobster tastes like responsibilities and overtime. <laughs> About that time, always the same thing, right, fellas? Who the servers bring the bill to? Straight to us. I got the no look pass it back to her. That look of shame on my face. Every now and again, I will look at the bill. That's what she snatched it out of my hand. What the hell are you looking at the bill for? What you gonna pay it with? Your visa exposure card? <laughs> Don't do me like that. And I've been dealt a bag, two bad cards, because I'm broke and skinny. <laughs> Let me get a round of applause of the women that date a skinny guy. <laughs> it's way more y'all in it than that. <laughs> now, ladies, I understand there are some few rules when you date the skinny guy. Three rules that I gotta let them know if we're gonna date. Don't fight, won't fight, don't fight. <laughs> So if we go out to the club and you get disrespected, well, you've been disrespected. <laughs> no, I can't, I can't do nothing, I done told you. I cannot do nothing for you. And my girlfriend, she knew this. She knew that I couldn't fight. She usually date the big dude, the big tough guy. But she want me to do big tough guy stuff. I can't do that. We laying in the bed, I'm sleeping good. All of a sudden, she gonna bump me. Babe, jump. I heard a noise. I jumped up, I said, oh damn, me too. <laughs> it's a good thing we're up here where it's safe. <laughs> she gonna look over me, oh. So you ain't gonna go check it out? I said, well, why I got to go? <laughs> Don't look at me, cause uh, you to me. I said, oh, okay. So now you're giving out promotions. <laughs> She's gonna look back and tell me, well, you know, the kids are down there. I said, oh, damn, the kids is down there. But well, wait a minute. Hell, them your kids. <laughs> hey, my name is Jordan Jackson, man. Thank y'all for the time. How's it going, everybody? Hey, give it up for me. I just had a birthday, 47. Yeah. I think I still look okay in the face. Uh, that's because the fat's pushing the wrinkles out. That is, my mother's friend comes up to me. She's like, hey, what's your secret? Botox? I said, Botox? This is cholesterol, baby. This is, this is bacon. Huh? <laughs> but I had to get a physical because I'm in my 40s, you know, and anybody in that age, bracket, you know what's up, you know? And uh, I didn't want to go, because the guy yelled at me last time I was there, told me to lose some weight, and I didn't. I gained like 15 pounds last year. But I had to go, and the first thing they do is they put you on the scale. And the nurse had an attitude, I don't know what her deal was. She was like, get on the scale. I'm like, okay. So I walk up, and I hold my breath, like it's gonna help me weigh less. <laughs> it doesn't work, so I just breathe normally. And she was being polite. She, anybody ever had them move the metal thing into the next 50 pound? Increment, that's always nice, right? 
She was like 46, 47. I'm like, just go ahead and flip it. We both know I'm over 250. Just go ahead and flip it. And she does, and she goes, wow, son. Really? I'm like, what? She's like, 278. I was like, my keys are in my pocket. She said, oh, no, fat boy, it ain't the keys. Get, you, get in the room, strip down, the doctor be with you in a second. So I'm in the room, waiting, hungry, <laughs> upset. Two hours come and go. It's ridiculous, man. I got bored. I started going through all the drawers. Anybody else? What are those full-on Q-tips for? I don't even want to know, you know? They left me alone so long, I got sleepy, guys. You know that exam table they have? It had a, with that butcher paper, that white butcher paper. It was a new role. And I was like, all right, you're gonna make me wait two hours? This is happening. I took it all off. I took the whole roll off. I made a nest in the middle of exam room three. And then I got in the nest. I looked like a giant baby bird. Like a giant sexy baby bird. In the fetal position, passed out, right? I wake up 40 minutes later, it's freezing. So I rip some off, I put it over my shoulders like grandma's sweater. And a guy walks in, he's like, what the hell? And I was in the stirrups. You can't leave me unattended for three hours and not experiment with the equipment, you know? He was so angry, the doctor was so upset because my butt got stuck to the vinyl. I used, I used all the paper in my nest, he was so mad. He said, this is unacceptable, Mr. Rodriguez. I'm like, what took you so long, man? He goes, listen, man, just turn around and drop your shorts. I was like, really? Just, that's when things got real, as the young people say, right? I'm like, no, hey, how you doing? Sorry about the wait. Ask me how my day was before we get down to business, you know what I mean? Which is rude, and I, he did the same thing last time. I was ready for him this time, guys. I was wearing a thong. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, we're both gonna be uncomfortable today, Doc. You don't unsee all this in a thong and think you're gonna be all right. And I don't manscape. My area is straight 1987, baby. If I can describe it, it, it looked like somebody tried to put a white wife beater on a black teddy bear. That is the cutest dirty joke you will ever hear. I didn't even take the thong off, guys, for the prostate exam. I just pulled it to the side. I was like, take it easy, Freddy Krueger. I got other appointments today. I go, what do I owe you? He goes, nothing, I'm the janitor. I was like, oh, oh, touche. I'm Carlos Rodriguez. Guys, thank you so much. Have a great rest of the night. Y'all all right? Yeah. All right. What a good looking crowd. Go ahead and give yourself a round of applause. All right. I'm surprised. Normally attractive people don't come out this early. There's always some ugly chick that's like, well, let me get on out here. Let me see what's going on in these streets. It's like, please don't. You are bringing us down with your ugliness. So I'm glad to see so many good looking people here. Good. Uh, before I get going, I want to give a, a shout out to all my fat people wearing Fitbits. We're trying. We are absolutely trying. We are trying. I had a woman say to me, well, you're already fat. Why are you, why are you wearing a Fitbit? I'm trying to live. The hell, I have a right to live. But I had a rude awakening that I needed to lose weight. It was horrible. I was out at a discotheque. Hair was done at the bar, dancing as you do. I was getting zero action. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I looked sensational. What's happening? <laughs> So finally, someone walked up to me and said, should you be in the club in your condition? <laughs> my condition? I was like, oh my God, I'm not pregnant. I can still have the sex. Please don't walk away. It's, it's terrible. Terrible. I joined Weight Watchers the very next day. The very next day. And I don't know if you know anything about Weight Watchers. There's a lot of points. Carry the one, carry this. I'm like, I need to know what I can eat right now. Okay, I'm having a breakdown. I need a snack this moment. It's ridiculous. But I tell you, I've learned it is the smallest changes that have the biggest impact. It's true. Like once I moved my bed out of the kitchen, the pounds just started <laughs> falling right off. Right off. So it's working for me, it's working for me. 
So I'm trying to lose weight because, you know, I'm single, I'm dating, I'm trying to get out there, you know? I always say to myself, Nika, you're such a nice person, you have such a good heart. I was like, well, no one's trying to sleep with your heart. You gotta get on a treadmill. You gotta entice them with the outer package. So I've been doing that, doing that. You know what, before I go, where are all the couples at? Where are the couples at? Go ahead and give yourself a round of applause. That's good, that's good. Everyone needs love, that's good. Where are my single ladies at? Single ladies, where are you at? All right, well, which one of y'all is gonna give me a shot of that puss tonight? No, is, is it too soon? Is it too soon? Should I wait until till we do each other a little bit better? Hey, I believe that uh, closed mouths don't get fed. You have to ask for what you want. You gotta put it out in the universe, baby. You gotta put it out there. It's true. And the thing that's so interesting is, I didn't even know I was gay until I came to Atlanta on vacation. That's a true story. It's a true story. I messed around and went to a strip club called Magic City. Oh my Lord, within two weeks, I'd quit my job, I moved to Atlanta, and I got an apartment for me and this chick named Sizzle. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was true love, but my credit still messed up over that. Still. So this time out, I've got a few rules. A few rules looking for the next girl, a few rules. Uh, like, no more young pretty girls. I can't do it. It's, there's a, it's a headache. People are always saying you're short and fat. She's tall and beautiful. What? I, it's too much. Like next time out, I'm gonna give me a starter girl. I mean, give me a girl with like a lazy eye and one of those little baby arms. That's more of my speed. More of my speed. Do that. Do that. Let's see what else. Uh, no white women. Now, before you judge me, I'm not at all a racist. I believe love is love, but I'm just afraid. How do I put this delicately? Uh, I'm afraid they might taste funny. But no, no, no. Not, not in any sort of derogatory sense. But you know, like, when white people are cooking, they don't put enough seasoning in their food. Like, do I need salt or some Texas peat in the bedroom? Do I need to spice it up? It seems dangerous. And I don't want to put anyone through that. It seems dangerous. It seems dangerous. Let's see, uh, what else? Uh, no big girls, no big girls. My thing is, we talked about my struggles. It's not you, big women, you are beautiful. It is absolutely me. Uh, I'm an overweight smoker, so anything could happen when I'm having the sex. I could have like a, a stroke, a heart attack, shortness of breath, anything. So I need a thin chick to spring into action in case something goes down. That's what I need. I absolutely do, because I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't want my mother to know I died wearing a fake dick. I don't want that for my mother. I love her. I don't want that. How would we even put that in the obituary? How would we? I don't want that for her. I love my mother. Love her. But I'll tell you, one time this chick left me hanging. She absolutely did. I'm in the back of the ambulance, can't breathe, clutching my chest, fake dick sticking straight up. <laughs> EMTs taking pictures of me, posting them on all the social media platforms. And then when I got to the hospital, they tried to cut me out of it, and I sat up in the bed, and I said, wait, this is my good dick. Can we save it? Can we save my good dick? My name is Nika Russell. That's my time. Good night.